Hello, I'm Lee Lin Chin and you're on Writers in Cars Going Nowhere. Apparently there are no original ideas left in the media. Let me request an Uber. That was quick. Let's go and get our passenger. Frank Morehouse, please join me in the car. We should explain that we live uh, in, on the same street. Just we live about. on the same neighbourhood, yeah. Uh, yeah. What is eventually going to happen to, to little nooks like King's Cross in Sydney? Well, all great cities have had them. Uh, and I've the seen left the left bank, uh, Greenwich Village, Soho. Soho. One of the great enclaves of my life was Balmain. Uh, we went there because the rents were cheap and it was a, a pretty much a working class, low rent place. Well, and gradually the people in the arts went there and then some of the uh, students from an academics, young ac academics from Sydney University and journalists and so on. And, and it, changed, it became for 20 years a or more um, um, culturally very alive. And then people woke up to the fact that a lot of the properties were harbour front. We, I had harbour front flats for years at rents you wouldn't believe. And um, the, then the real estate boom took over and, and the whole nature of, of altered and changed. And so I've seen, uh, I've had a, uh, an arts enclave, if you like, uh, disappear underneath me, start and disappear. And it's in the, I guess, it's sad, but it's in the cycle of cities. It's I read somewhere that you veer between being a pessimist and an optimist. <laughs> and much of it depends on what you're drinking, <laughs> who you have for company, and maybe what book you're reading at the time. <laughs> That'd be pretty true, yes. It's quite an accurate picture of you. There's a sort of a, a spread of a sort of nihilistic attitude that we're, the world is, is is screwed up and that we've screwed up the environment and so on. And, and I, I, I said somewhere that that uh, we all should be nihilistic. We all are all nihilists uh, once one day a week or two days a week. <laughs> In the Western democracies, we up to this point are operating on the two-party system, the Conservative Party and the less Conservative Party, which in most countries... Actually, are... one of the things that we, ne we don't quite face up to is that we don't have a two-party system, that the, the, that the Liberal Party is in power, in, co in coalition with the National Party, and we don't know what the National... It used to be the Farmers Party, but they're not farmers anymore. They just wear big hats and have all... What do we say? All hat, no cat, cattle. <laughs> <laughs> Many countries, like the most civilised countries like Denmark and Finland and Sweden and so on, have, co have small parties, multi-party systems, which form coalitions at the time of, at the, after the election. And, um, and I think that's the direction, that's probably a good thing. You're a martini drinker. Yes, that's right, I wrote the book. I wrote a book called The Martini a Memoir. So I, I sometimes have arguments with bar, barmen about bartenders at times and so, and and uh, and when they and I say look don't argue with me I wrote the book and the Hong Kong Literary Festival I was a, 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 a invited along and my book had just come out the Martini and memoir had just come out and they said talk about the Martini and all the young Chinese editors and journalists and writers and so on crowded in from Vogue Vogue China from uh, gourmet traveller China and so on and, and I taught and, and the South China Post said I taught I taught I taught the Chinese how to make the martini and started their downward spiral. The end well, of, I, I think that's a very towards fine, the end of communism. Uh, I think that's a very <laughs> fine credit to take. It's only a pity that we couldn't have had a martini in the car. Well apparently <laughs> there's a rule against that. <laughs> we only just found out. But that is not going to stop us repairing to where we can have one.